Hey, do you like chili sauce? How about fermented foods? If the answer is yes, then you're lucky, because today we're making fermented chili sauce. The reason why I like this sauce is because it's so easy to make. All you need is salt, water and some chilies. Now if you want to use red chilies like I did or green, jalapenos, any hot chili will do. Apart from being delicious and an amazing add-on to any dish that you can think about, it also has the benefit of fermented foods because by using just water and salt, you're actually activating lacto-fermentation when you do this sauce. It's easy to do because all you need is room temperature and maybe a cheesecloth or a paper towel on top of the container that you're going to be fermenting it in and then you can refrigerate it for extended periods of time. Best is to keep it for mainly a month or so but I've kept this sauce for even three months and it was still good because it's it's brined with salt. So that's a very good way of preserving foods in general. This taste is, is super different from any chili sauce that you will buy from any shop. So if you're looking for something that has a special or a different taste than all the Tabascos and Sirachas that you use on a daily basis, then this is a good alternative for you. Also, it's very customizable. You can use any type of chili that you have available and also add any type of spice or herbs that you love and that you enjoy eating on a daily basis, why not? When it comes to ingredients, you can do as much or as little as you want. The most important thing that you have to remember is when using the salt or calculating the salt, you will need 2 to 3% of the entire quantity of chilies used. So as you can see for us, for 400 grams of chilies, we ended up with 12 grams of rock salt. Once all your ingredients are ready, you'll want to remove the green part of the chilies. Uh, we have no use for that and it's only gonna be protruding outside of the water and that's gonna attract mold. So we want to remove that part. And once all the tails are removed, we want to stick the peppers as close to each other in our jar. Try to put as many as you can inside and if you need to be a bit more rough or brutal, don't worry about it. They will get soft with uh, the marinating process, so you're not doing any damage to them. As I said, the closer and the more packed they are together, the better. Once that's done, mix your rock salt with the water and make sure that it's fully dissolved. It's very important that the salinity of our water is as it should be. And after that, fill in your container, making sure that the entirety of the peppers are submerged under the brine. Cover it with a cheesecloth or a paper towel. And once that's done, put it in your fermentation station for five to seven days. Every day, remove the cheesecloth or the paper towel and check if anything is growing. If there's a white film that develops on top of the water, don't worry, don't, don't get scared. You can just skim that with a teaspoon or something like that and just cover it again. It's not toxic, it's not bad, it's not mold. Just keep on skimming that. It's just the, the salt, the salinity in the water attracts that kind of white film to grow. But it's fine, it's totally edible, yeah? Just remove it and do this every single day, just like when you make uh, sauerkraut. The same white film develops on top of it, so it's totally fine. If you have any extra brine, don't throw it away, keep it, because after the first two days, the peppers are gonna suck most of the water from, uh, from the jar and then they're gonna be exposed. We don't want the peppers to be exposed, we want them to be under the brine, because if they are exposed, they will mold and grow all kind of stuff. We want to avoid that. So second day after you, you checked on them, just re-top your jar with, uh, with the brine to make sure that everything is submerged. Keep doing this process of removing the white film and adding some extra brine up until day five and then take one of the peppers out and just squeeze it in between your fingers. If it's semi-mushed, semi soft but still has a bit of integrity then it's done you don't want to wait until your peppers are fully disintegrating because then you're not gonna have that pulp consistency in your chili sauce and you know you need a bit of a body to your sauce to add on top of your dishes so for us with our room temperature usually five days is enough but 
we've tried it in other places as well and it took up to seven days you just check it every day and you're gonna be fine first of all congratulations you finally got to the last stage of preparing this uh, amazing product remove the brine into whatever you have handy something that can grind all of this fine product into a paste put everything in you don't want to waste or throw away the brine because the brine is going to give it that delicious taste and continue preserving it once you're ready to blitz it go ahead we want seeds salt skin brine everything now a safety tip here use uh, gloves so you don't transfer all of that spiciness and touch your eyes or any other you know sensitive body part top up any containers that you have any sauce bottles any small tiny bottles like uh, the one that we have here uh, we love these tiny bottles because we can give it to our friends there's nothing better or nicer than a homemade product as a gift if you're like me and you cannot hold back then um, Tasting it and trying it right now at this moment is totally encouraged and acceptable. So feel free to, to taste uh, your concoction, your, your masterpiece. And hopefully you're going to be as happy with it as we are with it every single time we make it. That's it. Thanks for staying until this moment. Uh, now that you have this finished product, it's very important to keep it refrigerated. Otherwise, the fermentation is going to keep on going and who knows, maybe you're not going to like the next level of product that you're going to get. Think about it like this. Now you can have it on your favorite dishes. Uh, I love to eat this product on nachos, for example, or anything that can be dipped. Uh, it's one of my favorite things. But even if you get some small bottles like this, you can just give it to your friends, to your family, like a nice homemade gift. This is something that you spend time in, you waited for you almost a week or so to, to get the fermentation done. And maybe you just want to show off your fermentation skills, who knows. Either way, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you're gonna like the finished product. If you do make it, share with us your experience in the comments so we may know if you use the red chili, a green chili, a jalapeno, which by the way you can, just go with any type of chili that you prefer or that you have available in your part of the world. And see you next time.